Anthony Castrovince does a tremendous job covering the league for MLB.com and is going to join me now to weigh in on his takeaway from the WBC. And Anthony, thanks for being here. Let's start with Chinese Taipei because it wasn't a, a group, of course, that we talked a lot about, but there was a superstar that came out of that series. <laughs> There was indeed. And first of all, Alana, I wish I had that WBC swag that you got going on. But uh, I'm going to go through a little withdrawal now that this tournament this is, is over. This is authentic 2009 WBC swag. Oh, okay. That's vintage, <laughs> vintage stuff there. All right. I like it. Um, yeah, Chinese Taipei, you know, Yu Chang uh, really rose to the occasion there. You know, they weren't every, – every team had the same record. They were ultimately weren't able to advance. But that wasn't uh, for lack of effort from Yu Chang, who – um, initially was not going to participate in this tournament. He was going to, you know, report to camp with the Red Sox and try to win a job there, but ultimately decided to go and went seven for 16 with two doubles, two home runs, including a grand slam, eight RBI. So that was a really fun performance to watch. Okay, Team Italy. I love all of the hand gestures. My father's <laughs> Italian, so I'm in tune right. with that, of course. We all speak with our hands, us Italians, but some hand gestures, an espresso machine. What did you like from <laughs> the Italians? Well, they advanced first and foremost, which I don't think most people had circled uh, Team Italy to do that. And, uh, you know, for people like us, Alana and, and, and Mad Dog Russo, you know, it's near and dear to our hearts when the Paisans uh, are able to move on in this tournament. And you mentioned the espresso machine, although Mike Piazza had said uh, it was a little strange drinking espresso from paper cups as opposed to ceramic <laughs> mugs. He thought that was sacrilege. Um, and also, you know, the Italians advanced with only one home run in five games. So that just shows we Italians can get the job done in more subtle ways. I like that. <laughs> yeah, we hit for average, not necessarily hitting for power, Anthony. Okay, <laughs> you look at Puerto Rico versus the DR. Of course, the takeaway from that is the terrible injury to Mets yeah. closer Edwin Diaz. But apart from that, which is significant, it was a pretty great, pretty great uh, matchup to see. Yeah, that just added to what a bummer that injury was because otherwise we would have been talking that entire next day about what an incredible you know just atmosphere that was <clears throat> excuse me down there in Miami and the fan bases you know just the, the passion that we saw from uh, the Puerto Rican and Dominican Republic fan bases it was it was really a joy to watch that game and then Francisco Lindor with the little league home run uh, was a clear highlight and you just love the energy that that Puerto Rico team uh, played with and you know the blonde hair and, and all that um, so, you know, surprised ultimately when you scale back, it's, it's a surprise that neither one of those teams, you know, advanced, uh, much further, but, um, but that was, that was some great baseball up until the Edwin Diaz injury and, uh, you know, wish the best for him, uh, in his recovery. Cause that was, that was tough to watch. Yeah, when you looked at Pool D, you're like, oh, my gosh, this pool is absolutely stacked. I don't think we gave Venezuela enough credit. They actually played really, really well, and it's hard to believe that Puerto Rico and the Dominican didn't advance to the, uh, the final game. Okay, Randy yeah. Orosa Renna now could have easily played for Team Cuba. He was born in Cuba, but made sure the Mexican president knew he wanted to be on Team Mexico. And, Anthony, I feel that this type of atmosphere, Randy Orosa Renna was born to play. Unbelievable. I mean, can we just make this guy's entire career out of tournaments? He can just take the regular season off and show up on the first day of October and apparently the first day of the WBC because, uh, you know, he's, he's off to a strong start in his major league career, but nothing to the level of what we see this guy do in the biggest moments, in the biggest games. He does it in every way. He does it on the base pass, at the plate, uh, you know, home run robbery and, and the, the great reaction to it, you know, kind of deacon everybody just so so chill there after he robs the home run and just stands there with the ball. Uh, he's just so calm. He just oozes confidence on the field. And, uh, you know, again, if he can, if he can uh, corral that and, and, and extrapolate that over a full major league season, we're looking at a future Hall of Famer. That's how good this guy is in the big games. But he hit 607 in this World Baseball Classic, so he came to play. Uh I think it's the boots. He has those special good luck boots. I love the fact he was signing autographs in between pitches, and I would love to see an overlay of the Adam Jones catch and the Randy Rosarena catch robbing the home run. Okay, moving on to the title game. You have Team Japan, of course, against Team USA. Trey Turner was tremendous throughout the entire tournament. Another home run for him in the title game, and he just exploded throughout the couple of weeks. He did. You know, I've seen some people touting him as, as maybe an MVP candidate uh, joining the Phillies this year. And I could see it from a narrative perspective, but I always wonder from a statistical perspective, is that going to happen for Trey Turner? Is he going to have that kind of power year that MVPs typically have when you look at the history of voting 
for this award. You know, he's, I think he's had one season with a slugging percentage above 500. But all that is, is just to get to the point of maybe we are going to see that from Trey Turner because we just saw this dude hit five home runs in this tournament. He hit four in the span of seven at bats. Um, and he just he just caught fire. You know, he just he, he was playing with passion for his country. And um, it, it was just so cool to see him step up in the big moments. He's obviously uh, – takes on a lot of risk uh, in, in going to this tournament after signing this massive free agent deal with the Phillies. But uh, he looks ready to go start the season right now for Trey Turner because I think he's locked in. Yeah, and you know, you look at Trey Turner, Anthony, and I don't immediately think power hitter, home run hitter, but he has right. such quick bat to ball speed. He's so fast right. on the bases. He's just an all around tremendous player. OK, Shohei Otani, he's a freak, Anthony. <laughs> He is. And, uh, you know, I saw Pedro Martinez just thanking him on behalf of baseball. So thank you, Pedro, for thanking Shohei Otani, because uh, it was kind of cool. I got to kind of introduce my my young kids to Shohei Otani during this tournament because they were watching some of the you know, some of his games. And um, he's just such a special talent. We you can't say it enough. But I think what makes him doubly special is you think about all that he has on the line this year. First of all, in his career. Right. I mean, he didn't have to go to the all star game and pitch and hit in a, you know, what is a, essentially a meaningless exhibition game. But he does that, you know, to show off his skills. And he, he respects baseball and he respects the league and um, and he respects his role within that. So that's really cool. And now he's got, who knows, 400 million, 500 million, 600 million on the line uh, in this, this free agent walk here. And he participates in this World Baseball Classic and not just participates, but, you know, hits some huge home runs, a, a big double to spark the rally in the semifinals against Mexico and then comes in and throws 102 miles an hour to strike out Mike Trout. And obviously, you know, they're teammates, but there's, there's so much more to it than that. You know, Mike Trout, the respect that Otani has for Trout is a huge reason why he signed with the angels in the first place and get this Alana, Mike Trout, three swinging strikes against Shohei Otani. Uh, he had only, he's only had 24 plate appearances in his career with three swinging strikes. That's a, that's in more than 6,000 plate appearances in Mike Trout's career. So, again, Shohei Otani is a freak because when you can strike out Mike Trout the way he did in that moment, that's, that's special stuff. Yeah, it was special stuff. It was equally special seeing both of those guys carrying their respective country flags out to start the game yesterday. Anthony Castrovince, we appreciate it. We are upon opening day soon next week. Look forward to speaking to you throughout the year. Can't wait, Alana. Thank you.